Hey there, time travelers. Ready for another nostalgia trip back to the past? Hop in, because in today's video, we are traveling back in time to Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. Foster's Home is one of those Cartoon Network classics that always makes us smile when we look back on it. It also happens to be one of the first TV shows that I ever started reading fan theories about, and oh, what a rabbit hole that sent me down. Only there was no Mr. Harriman on the other side to greet me. Nope, instead there were a couple of childhood smashing concepts that seemed too accurate to not be based in truth surrounding one of our favorite cartoons ever. Today we're going to be discussing what fans have been referring to as Frankie's Imagination Theory. It would be difficult to talk about Frankie's imagination theory without first discussing what is one of the most popular fan theories on the internet surrounding Madame Foster and her granddaughter Frankie. If you remember, Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends was a show whose premise was in the title. It's a cartoon that follows a human named Mac who lives in this amazing world where imaginary friends are actual physical entities that children can make up and spend their childhood with. However, once a child outgrew their imaginary friend, they would give them up to a foster home where children with less active imaginations could come and pick one up and have a best friend for themselves. This is where Madame Foster and her amazing home came into play. Madame Foster ran a foster home for all of the imaginary friends that showed up at her door. She provided them with a safe place to stay and live out their lives until they were lucky enough to get adopted. And she did this with the help of her very own imaginary Mr. Harriman, a large human-sized funny bunny whose tail is quite fluffy and ears are quite floppity. Along with Mr. Harriman, Madame Foster is assisted by her snarky and witty 22-year-old granddaughter named Frankie, who acts almost as the surrogate elder sibling to all the imaginary friends. Frankie was always willing to help Wilt, Coco, Eduardo, and Blue whenever they were in a bind, but she would also make sure they learned a lesson in the process. Now, watching the show way back when it came out in the early 2000s, I could always see that Frankie shared a ton of similarities with her grandmother, and the two had a bunch in common. But I'll admit that I always just assumed that was because of their familial ties. It wasn't until around 2010 or so when I stumbled across this theory on Tumblr, though I'm unsure if that's the original source. And this theory blew my mind and made me look at Foster's home in an entirely different way as I watched it again. It was still an amazing show, and in fact, it was actually a bit more interesting after I'd stumbled onto the idea that Frankie wasn't actually Madame Foster's granddaughter and was instead an imaginary friend just like the rest of the inhabitants of the house. Before you go and brush this theory to the side, here are the facts that made it seem far too accurate to be false, at least in my opinion at the time. The first and possibly the most obvious out of the connections between Madame Foster and Frankie would have to be the similarities that we briefly spoke about before. Both of them are witty, sarcastic, and love to have fun despite Mr. Harriman being all about the rules. I will no longer cause you such shame and disappointment. On top of that, if you take a look at their wardrobes, they are practically identical. Only Frankie is wearing a younger and more modern version of it compared to Madame Foster. While I always assumed that this was because Frankie had the same taste as her grandmother, what if we were to consider that Madame Foster imagined Frankie to be a younger version of herself with the idea that Frankie would take care of the house that Madame Foster had simply grown too old to manage? Think about it. Frankie, unlike most of the other children in that universe, didn't seem to have an imaginary friend of her own. And that's despite being literally surrounded by them almost 24-7. And the show never shows us or even mentions the idea of Frankie ever having an imaginary friend of her own. What if that's because she is an imaginary friend, so she wouldn't be able to own one or connect with one as humans can? I know what you might be thinking. She acts and looks like a human, though. How could she be imaginary? Well, do you remember the imaginary friend of goofball John McGee? He looked like a human, too, didn't he? I mean, he seemed so human-like that everyone other than Blue was convinced that he was a human just trying to score a free bed and meal at the foster home. But that wasn't the case, and it turned out that he was actually a lost imaginary friend who was thankfully reunited with his owner. And if he can look like a human, I think it's definitely plausible that Frankie was also just a humanoid imaginary friend that was created to help Madame Foster and she made her in the image of her younger self. As I said, that theory was one of the first times I came face to face with a theory that involved a show I had watched. It possibly had an entirely different concept than what I was aware of. And ever since then, I've loved looking into fan theories about my favorite franchises and seeing what their fan bases can come up with. That being said, it has recently come to our attention that this theory might actually be a bit twisted from what was really going on in Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. There's a new theory that seems just as plausible and as made us think that we've had it backwards all along. You see, in this theory, 
Frankie was the mind behind it all. It was her imagination that was responsible for literally everything that we saw in Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. The theory starts out by explaining that when Frankie was a very young child, she'd been diagnosed with autism along with other issues that affected her mental development, and thus she was a bit different from the rest of the children that she was around at school. In her youth, she felt entirely alone as she had no friends at school and her home life wasn't anything special either. It was actually the opposite. Her parents were very hands-off and neglected her. Meanwhile, they were constantly trying to have another child, a normal child. This would only end in tragedy, but we'll get to that in a moment. After a while, Frankie ended up creating an imaginary friend for herself to help her combat that loneliness that had been swallowing her. She ended up imagining a large teddy bear, which she named Mikey, and Mikey was always there for her. He went to school with her, and he made sure that she was never alone again. And while the other children played with one another, Frankie spent her days alone on the pavement, talking to a friend that only she could see. Fast forward a bit to junior high, and Frankie was still imagining her friend Mikey. And to the other kids, this was just extra strange at that point. To cut down on some of the dramatic details of the theory, basically Frankie's parents noticed that Frankie was not aging like other children when it came to social skills, and they took her to a doctor who prescribed her medication to stop her hallucinations. They apparently hid it in her favorite beverage, chocolate milk, and alas, I'm not a man, I'm an imaginary man. As days went on, Frankie found it harder and harder to envision her only friend, Mikey, until he completely disappeared from her memory altogether. And as the theory tells it, one day Frankie found the medication in the kitchen and confronted her mother, who went into a rage, screaming at Frankie for misbehaving. This caused a scared and traumatized Frankie to flee from the home. Frankie left her house and continued to run as far away from her home as she could, and she kept running until she physically couldn't move anymore. That was when she found herself downtown, surrounded by a abandoned buildings that had been run down for years at this point. When she stopped running, she turned around to see a house, unlike anything she had ever seen before. It was almost as if she was looking at a castle. That's how beautiful it was to her. Meanwhile, to anybody else, it just looked like a regular abandoned apartment building. The multicolored paint job is what caught her eye, and as soon as she walked through the doors, she knew she was home. Frankie stayed in this abandoned building, and slowly the effects of the pills that she had been taking began to fade. Sadly, though, she never saw Mikey again. No matter how hard she tried to remember her teddy bear friend, he just wouldn't appear. This is when Frankie decided to make new friends with her imagination, and soon enough, the house started filling up with guests of all shapes and sizes. She began to imagine the friends that we all knew and loved from the show, like Coco, Eduardo, and Wilt. Now you might be asking yourself, but what about Madame Foster? Where was she when Frankie was going up? And why would Mac be coming around if the place is abandoned and Frankie isn't entirely sane? Well, what if we told you that she imagined both of them too? You see, we mentioned before that Frankie's parents were trying to have another child. Eventually, Frankie found out that she was going to have a baby brother, and she couldn't have been happier. That was until there were complications during the birth and Mac didn't make it. Madame Foster, on the other hand, was likely based on Frankie's grandmother. She would have loved Frankie no matter what, and that's why Madame Foster was imagined as such a happy and sweet woman that would do anything to protect her and all of the other friends that she had made and begun to call her family. Frankie's real grandmother sadly passed away when Frankie was only nine years old. The death of her brother and grandmother remained with her, but in order to cope, she created them as imaginary friends so she could keep the two people she loved with her forever. The theory is quite a sad one, but when you really think about it, and when you rewatch the show with this concept in mind, it's fairly eye-opening. The idea that most of the humans that we see in the show are actually just imaginary friends makes a lot of sense when you consider how nonchalant they all are around the amazing-looking monstrous beings that are just called friends. What do you guys think, though? How do you feel about these theories? Do you think that Madame Foster made up Frankie in order to help maintain Foster's home as she got into her elder years? Or do you think that Frankie is the one who had the imaginative mind and made it all up to protect herself from an otherwise horrible world? Be sure to let us know in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. As for now, that's all time travelers. Let us know what video you'd like to see next in the comments and like and subscribe for more time traveling videos.